Luke chapter 12, and I'm going to begin in verse 22. And I want to preach a little bit on anxiety. Anxiety, care and anxiety. I read this earlier this week, and I thought, Lord, I don't know where I'm going to go with that. I, I don't have a clue where I'm going to go with it. But you know what? The Lord knew. Verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouses nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are you better than the fowls? I've read this often on this week, meditated on it mostly, and I thought, God, there's some thoughts in here about the raven. There's thoughts in here about the lily of the field. Lord, that you said was more beautiful than even Solomon in all of his glory. But it said, which of you with taking thought can add, add to his stature one cubit? If then, if you then be not able to do this thing, which is least, why take you thought to the rest? In other words, if we can't fix the smaller things, why do we try to fix everything else in life? The average family is worn out with dealing with the cares of life. The average family is worn out with dealing with sickness, brokenness, a need, specific need, family, the cares of life will wear you out. And there's a scripture that said that Satan seeks to wear out the saints. To wear out means to make you totally, well, just driven into a corner, so to speak. But the Lord is speaking about this. Now, the reason I know that I've got the word this morning, I had another dream last night. Thank God. And in this dream, I was with a group of people. Remember, last week I had a dream on Saturday night. The Lord does not give me the finishing touch, seems like, till just a few minutes before I get in the pulpit. But in this dream, the Spirit of God came down. And the power of the Most High God overshadowed me, enveloped me. And while I was under such a high, uh, powerful anointing, the Lord spoke. And he said this, I will provide. I will provide. And I thought, God, you're talking to us. Our nation... They're talking about the economy. Different ones talk about your job. Different ones, Satan takes one issue and will absolutely wear you down. And you feel like you're not able to pray. It seems like you cannot grasp another grain of faith rising up in you. How many of you you have ever been where you didn't feel much faith left? You didn't feel all that joy hope and assurance that your soul needed. And when I read this, especially after I had that dream last night when God said, I will provide, there's a song somewhere that says, God will provide. One way or another, God will provide. We need to take hold of that word, do battle with it. God, you said, that you will provide. David said, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. When my heart is overwhelmed within me, Lord, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Lord, when things down here is out of my control, Lord, when there's nothing I can do, Lord, when there's nothing, there's, I've got problems, God, that I can't solve. So I go to the higher power. Lord, lead me to that rock, my God that unmovable, that unshakable, 
that unbudgeable rock which is the word of God and lead me Lord lead me Lord lead me to that rock that's higher than I but it said the fowls of the air they don't have bars to lay up anything in I've been feeding my birds and uh, I find they like a certain food better than others but I get pleasure out of seeing those birds come to their bird feeder and they'll put pick up seem like one little morsel at a time and they're so thrilled they fly off with it and get on the limb of a tree and they enjoy that one little morsel they don't worry about will there be another one when I go back to the bird cage they don't worry about that the word said they don't have bars to store things up now we as Americans we like to have when I go to the store very seldom do I buy just one can of anything especially if I like it I was out and about the other day and went to the store to buy something I forgot what but she said here's one like you're looking for I said give me two I like to buy at least two cans or two of whatever that way when I use that one I've got another one until I can go to the store but the word said why worry about small things that you can't handle anyway in other words he's saying learn to lean on me learn to trust me if Raymond Hart said anything he said there will be a time that people will be driven into trusting God now things in our nation are shaky if we let ourselves honey you could you could go stark raving crazy worrying about well Lord what where are we headed where are we headed God how are you going to intervene but the Lord is talking to the church he said listen don't worry about something you can't help you learn to put your faith and your trust in me he said the fowls of the air they don't have anything to store up nothing to store it up in but do they worry no they don't no they don't we are called the people of faith the people that trust God the people that lean on God but you know it's one thing to preach it it's another thing to sing about it it's another thing to to talk about it but honey when you have got to lean on God it ain't so easy it's not easy for flesh to lean on the invisible God is an invisible God but when the Lord my God spoke this so powerful he said I will provide how many believes that today God will provide he will provide I said God the El Shaddai Meshaka, Meshaka. I said the Almighty God is more than enough Mashallah. thank you Holy One of Israel my God you're talking to us today Lord you're talking about not the now time maybe at the moment you don't know what I'm talking about but maybe down the road somewhere you're going to, we're going to have to look back and say Lord you said that you will be our provider our more than enough thank you Holy Ghost God can speak ahead of time I am your healer years ago I would say at least 50 years ago I was dealing with a physical situation and I was concerned but one night I had a dream you see God's began to give me my dreams back thank God in this dream it was more like a vision it was it's like a, a golden grain I would say of corn I saw it it started at the top of my head and it went through my whole body and out my feet and the, I heard an audible voice of God say I have healed you God healed me of that thing and I have not had a, a problem with it ever since but every now and then when a symptom would show up I say but God I'm healed 
Oh, but God, I'm healed. I said, but God, you said that you healed me. Thank God. God is our healer regardless. My God. He is our provider regardless. Thank you, Lord. But the fowls of the air, they lean on the Lord, don't they? They lean on the Lord. But I got down where the Lord said, talking about the lilies of the valley, the lilies. They don't spin. They don't toil. They just let God be God. Will we, as children of God, ever learn to just let God be God? Will we ever learn, Lord, you said it, I believe it, and that settles it. But the lily, it said it, it does not spin, it doesn't toil. But said it's arrayed in more glory than Solomon was arrayed in. Now Solomon was a rich man. Honey, he had it all but to be arrayed a lily, just a lily out in the field. And I thought, I tried to do a little study, I thought, God, show me something about that lily, about the glory of it. You see, we look at a lily and we think it's pretty. But you know what? They bloom mostly what, what, around Easter. You've heard of Easter lilies? They come forth with the glory of God. And I thought, Lord, the next time I look at a lily, God somehow helped me to see the glory in it. It's beautiful. But the Word said, the glory, I would say the favor of God is upon that one flower more than it was upon Solomon in all of his glory. Now, that's hard for me to grasp, but I believe it. They're beautiful. But it's talking about trusting in God and leaning on the Word of God. Lord, help me to chew this as if it's that, that old double bubble like they used to have. Remember that? That pink ball of chewing gum about the size of a walnut. And it was pink. Chew that, and the more you chewed it, Listen, the bigger it got, but you can blow some great big bubbles with that. I mean, go out and pop them. I was pastoring in Burks Hill, Tennessee, a long time ago, 50 years ago or more. We had a precious lady that was a member there. Wonderful. While I was be preaching, she'd be back there chewing her chewing gum. I could see her mouth just going. I didn't say anything, but after a while, she'd blow a bubble. And it get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and you, you get to watch and wait. Well, when's it going to pop? When's it going to pop? When's it going to pop? But she did that without thinking. Now, if I could get the Word of God in my mouth, if we can get the Word of God in our he said eat the Word, didn't he? Kind of chew it like an old cow is chewing the cud. Get all the, the nutrients out of the Word. God, you said Oh, my God, you said, keep chewing on that. Who oh, every now and then blow a bubble. My God, watch that bubble pop and then turn around and blow another. But God, you said, the Word said, God said this, the El Shaddai said this. How will you do it? That lily does not know if it's wearing the glory of God. The birds do not know, listen, that, that, that God, that not, the, the Lord said, not one hair on our head would fall. The fowls of the air know how to trust in God. Have you? We used to be riding along, Raymond would look up, and the power lines would be just lined with birds. Have you ever seen power lines and birds sitting up there? And I mean, they, they didn't worry. They just, I don't know, Raymond says, I wonder how in the world they do it. They just did it. You know, they're resting. It was their nature to rest. But Raymond, you say, I don't know how in the world they fly in formation without running into each other. <laughs> Just little things like that that you take notice of, but they knew how to keep formation. They knew how to stay in rank. If the church world, if we just knew how to stay in rank, in formation, my God, whoo, my God, what a mighty God we serve. He is the leader. My God, he's the chief captain. He's the master of every storm. But my God, help me, Lord, when the storms hit, to say, my God, you're still my captain. Lord, you're the ruler. My God, you rule the wind. You rule, you rule the water. My God, you've got a hold of everything. In Jesus' name. 
anxiety. When I went to the doctor back in October, the doctor said, you're dealing with anxiety. I thought, I don't think so. I did not feel anxious about anything. I did not feel stressed out about anything. I did not feel pressure from any, any area. But yet they started treating me for anxiety. Well, before it was over, I felt worse than I did when I started. You know, sometimes uh, medications don't work overnight. So one day I said, God, what I need, what I need, God, is you. Lord, what I need is some good praying saints. Lord, what I need, my God, in other words, is to rev up our prayer life. When we anointed and appointed Sister Joanne and Sister Angel back there the other day to be our prayer warriors here, I thought different times, but they're praying, Lord. Joanne's praying, Angel's praying. If you know somebody's praying, it helps you. How many here you ever deal with anxiety? Your nerves. As far as I know, this is the first time I've ever preached on anxiety. But after I heard some of the testimonies this morning, some of the comments, I sat there and I said, God, I know I've got the word this morning. I know I have. Tell you not worry. Learn to lean on him. There's a song leaning on the everlasting arm. Lean on me. Lord, lean on me. There's another song. I don't know how you're going to do it, Lord. Any way you do it, Lord, is all right with me. As long as we see the arm of God, the strong arm of the living God, praying this week. No one praying. I just walked, walked through the house in the kitchen, and the spirit of prayer and prophecy hit me just like that. Well, I was so thrilled over it because it had been a while since that had happened. And I got so excited about it. I got on my knees and said, God, thank you. I needed this. I needed this, God. Thank you, Lord. I needed this. But what he said was this, doom, doom. And then he spoke something else. And I, th and I got to crying and praying. That word means destruction and a fall. And I felt like he was talking about our nation, our government, the leaders of our government are going to fall. I don't know when. And things will begin to fail. You see, God does not give a warning about trusting Him without reason. The Lord did not give me that experience just to make me rejoice. I believe it's for uh, uh, whoever hears this message that God will provide one way or another. You see, Elijah the great prophet of God. What does God do in a time of famine? Elijah went down. God said, Elijah, go down there by the brook, Sheriff. And said, I will command the ravens to feed you there. At what, two times a day, those birds heard, they got an order from God. They got an order from God. They got a, a menu from God. Now, I don't know what that food was. But whatever it was, it's what Elijah needed. And God fed him supernaturally for some length of time. Then said, now it's time to go over yonder. A widow woman over there is going to sustain you. You know the story. What I'm saying is this. He had to either believe God or doubt God. It's easier to believe God, but God, God provided, but just in a different way. A different way. You've heard Raymond talk about his family. They were wintertime, stole the ground. They didn't have any food to eat that morning. And his dad said, boys, we're going to pray. They got down to pray. And said before long, they, the doorbell rung. Raymond's dad told Maurice, said, go to the door. They went to the door, and there was two large baskets of food sitting on the porch. A snow was falling, but there was no steps, footsteps in the snow. 
There was no way that someone could have brought those two baskets of food. But they were there. God intervenes in so many ways. No wonder God said, I will provide. One way or another, God will provide. We worry sometimes about things. The Lord said, why worry when you can't do nothing about it? And which of you with taken thought can add to his stature one cubit? If you then be not able to do this thing, that which is least, why take you thought for the rest? Cons I, I love this, verse 27. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you, that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of them. If God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven. How much more until will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? You see, he was dealing with just a little faith. I thank God that he can take me when I don't have just a little bit of faith left. He can take that and use it. Seek not, seek not ye what you shall eat or what you shall drink, neither be ye doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father listen, knoweth that you have need of these things. God knows what you have need of. God knows what we have need of. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. And then I lie, I've got it circled here. Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not, little flock. And I thought, oh God, you've surely got to be talking to us. It's the Father's good pleasure in giving you the kingdom. He tells us to seek the things of God first. And he said, I will add... When God gets to adding, he does it his way. He said, I will add the things that you have need of. Have you ever known God to fail you? Of course not. And it's during that time of trusting God that Satan will come against you, harass you, you can't eat, you can't sleep, you can't talk faith. Have you? He said, oh, you have little faith. I'm glad he does, does not forsake us when we've got just a little faith left. Have you ever seen the time that you, you didn't feel what little faith you had? You knew it was there, but you didn't quite feel it like you wanted to. Now, to feel faith is good. But I've had to trust God, honey, when I didn't feel faith. I've had to trust God when I didn't even think faith. I've had to trust God when I could not even sing about faith. Have you? But yet somewhere deep inside, I knew that my God was faithful. Now shot you. Hey, hey, hey. Somewhere deep within, I knew. Just lean on Him. Just trust Him. In all that you say and do, trust God. My Lord and my God, honey, I don't know what's ahead. I have no clue what's ahead. But God is saying you can't do nothing about it. There's nothing you can do about it. My God. Father, emotional disturbances, emotional disturbances have triggered the narcotic world to increase. It's easier, my God, to take a nerve tablet, tranquilizer, than it is to trust in God sometimes. But God said, if I'd get my people to lean on. You see, I don't know God speaks ahead of time sometimes. I will provide. Now, what the Lord is saying, there's things going to take place that you can't help. You can't change. You can't pray it out of the way. You can't just 
think it out of the way. You can't ignore it. But he said you must know that I will provide. God will provide. One way or another, God is going to provide. How many believes that? I believe it right now because I don't have a pressing need. <laughs> right now, I believe it because my bills is paid. I've got shoes that I've never worn. I've got clothes I've never worn. I've got food I've never eaten. It's easy to say I trust God now. But when you've got a bill coming due and you ain't got no money, no job, no nothing, you have to fall back. But God, you said you would provide. Provision comes from God. But the point I want to bring out, he said, fear not, little flock. Now, he was dealing with the people that had just a little faith, a little bit, just a little bit. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you what? Extra heat, eat beans and all. He said, the kingdom. The kingdom of God will provide spiritual and natural everything that we have need of. The Lord will provide. Would you stand? Lord, I know you gave this to me. I know you did. So God, take it. Touch it with the blood of the Lamb. God, enwrap this message with power and demonstration. Let it be more than just a message, Lord. Let it be like the fishes and the loaves. And Lord, whatever little faith we've still got, take it, Father, and use it. Lord, those that's dealing with their employment, employers, God, this will fit. Lord, this will cover the situation. And Lord, those that's got other issues that require help, financial help. God, this will apply. You said, Lord, this is for somebody. God will. He, did, he didn't say I might. He said, I will provide. I will. And fought to have what we've got. I didn't get the, uh, the Holy Ghost easy. The blood did not come without a price. Not my price, but his price. The name of Jesus, my God, is stronger than any weapon that's formed against the church. 